So I'm just going to give um, basically a bit of an overview on the Welsh Giva project um, and then give you an update um, to where we are now um, in regards to reintroducing beavers back to Wales. Okay, so first of all to tell you who we are. So I'm the Welsh Beaver Project Officer. I've been in post since February 2016, but prior to that I've worked with beavers in Scotland for about six years. That's where a lot of my beaver knowledge um, has come from. And the project itself is managed by Adrian Lloyd-Jones, who's based at North Wales Wildlife Trust. I'm based at Bradford Wildlife Trust, right in the middle of Wales. And that's partly because the project is a Wales-wide project, and by being based in the middle, it's easier to get north, south, and everywhere else um, in Wales. Everywhere is roughly equal distance there. Um, the, my post is uh, supported by the People's Postcode Lottery. Um, and as I mentioned, it's a Wales-wide project, so all the six trusts in Wales come under the umbrella body of Wildlife Trust Wales and so we have a steering group on the project um, so staff members from all these trusts um, come together every now and again um, and they help steer the project in the right direction, give us advice um, and yeah, represent their, their trust views um, on beaver introductions. And so just to go back to the beginning, the idea of reintroducing beavers back into Wales um, first started in 2001. Shortly after that, um, a meeting was held um, in Newtown by various people, various beaver experts, wildlife experts um, and conservation bodies to discuss um, actually reintroducing beavers back. Um, and then from there, a study was commissioned by Countryside Council of Wales um, to look at the sort of initial feasibility of reintroducing beavers. And it was decided that the Wildlife Trust um, in Wales to take the lead on this. The Wildlife Trust um, in Scotland and in England were doing similar things as well, so it made sense to do the same in Wales. Um, the project um, to start with um, involved looking at um, basically is it feasible to reintroduce beavers. Um, from that, it's um, looked at gaining support from various stakeholders, including the Welsh Government as well. Various Welsh Government environmental ministers have signed letters supporting the project and at the very early stages funding was secured by CCW and the Environment Agency as well to first of all provide, look at feasibility um, of reintroducing beavers um, and there's an initial steering group um, was started by various um, organisations, the legacy body CCW, Environment Agency and other conservation bodies. And, uh, Beaver Project website was produced just so we had um, an information base um, that people could come to to look at information on beavers um, and also to look at the research that had been done um, to date. And throughout uh, the process, there's been lots of public engagement coming to events like this, um, having one to one meetings with farming groups, fishing groups, other conservation groups, just again to provide more information um, on why we want to reintroduce beavers, the benefits of beavers. Um, and so on. So the initial part of it um, was conducting first of all desk-based studies, GIS studies, looking at river systems, catchments in Wales to see if there was habitat suitable for beavers um, but also to rule out areas that may not be suitable, looking at what river systems around, um, what riparian habitats um, was there and once sites were selected in, um, there was then sort of a broad survey on the ground looking at different sites such as in North Wales, right across um, the country. And then eventually six key sites uh, were picked out. Most of Wales could be suitable and could um, um, hold beavers um, and be perfectly adequate for beavers, but to start off with we need sort of somewhere to start with. Um, so six key sites um, were selected and in depth um, on the ground ecological surveys were conducted in each of these sites and you may notice a lot of the sites are to the west of the country um, rather to the east that's partly for political reasons um, more than anything um, to the west of the country we're away from sort of uh, conflicts such as um, borders to other countries so i.e the border to england um, you may notice um, one river the river Dee, um, does go through england that was kept in there because well, there was only a small section that goes through England. The majority of the river itself is in Wales and the habitat was really suitable. So it's good to get comparison with rivers on the east and west, but mainly um, it's easier to deal with one government, let alone two. Um, that's partly why we looked at the west of the country. 
Um, and then from that, many reports were produced. Um, all these reports are available on our website. So the first reports, um, the top reports, uh, just here. This is an ecological report. It was produced, um, co-produced by a beaver expert based in Norway. He's called Duncan Halley. Um, and he works with beavers all the time over in Norway. He came over did some ecological surveys. That's his sort of report, looking mainly at those six key sites. The next report is the Welsh Beaver Assessment Report, and that's basically everything from the ecological surveys to public engagement surveys, looking at the benefits of beavers, as well as where beavers may have a negative impact, and also the management uh, systems that you can implement, um, as Peter was saying, in terms of managing beavers. Um, the next report is just a summary report, and the very last report is just another report that's produced by um, beaver expert uh, Derek Gow, who's based in Devon. He's been involved in many of the beaver projects in Britain, and he did another survey for us looking at various other sites in Wales. And so, since I've been in post, we've been sort of keeping an eye on these six sites. Um, so one of the sites is in Mid Wales, the, the Rydal Valley. So this is going to be one of the sites we were going to reintroduce uh, beavers into um, around 2014-2015. However, plans have slightly changed um, and we're now looking at other sites to reintroduce beavers. And sort of additional sites um, such as uh, Cause Karen, um, sort of again, uh, sites that are maybe slightly different in habitat. So Cause Karen is very different to the Rydal Valley. The Rydal Valley is very steep-sided valleys. So ideal for keeping beavers sort of naturally enclosed in an area while we're trying to reintroduce them. Cause Karen, in contrast, is very flat, it's very marshy, has ideal beaver habitat. So looking at sort of um, each site on a case-by-case -case basis. We're looking at sites in uh, Pembrokeshire. Uh, this is the River Gwine. So in Pembrokeshire, there's lots of small rivers that could be ideally suited for beavers. And we've even been told by some fishermen anglers in, in Pembrokeshire that some of, the fish, uh, some of the rivers are classed as fishless rivers. And so maybe this is an ideal site uh, to see if beavers can benefit um, these rivers and maybe one day we may see fish starting to return and that's sort of in terms of salmon and trout. Then we're looking at rivers um, in North Wales for similar reasons as well. But the main site we're looking at at the moment is a site in Carmarthenshire. So this site um, is uh, privately owned, um, it's owned by an organisation called the Bevis Trust, a farmer-led organisation as they manage, they do a lot of farming but they also manage their land for wildlife. They've been involved with red kite reintroductions, um, waterfall reintroductions and now we're working with them on bee reintroductions. They're currently home to three beaver families um, and they have opened their site for people to go and watch beavers in the spring summer months. So we're hoping uh, to be able to release some of those beavers from those families into a catchment very nearby. So it's a very small catchment in Carmarthenshire. It's about 67 uh, kilometres in length, and it goes right down into Carmarthen Bay. Um, and the plan is um, initially to release those three uh, beaver families, beaver pairs, and in time um, supplement those beavers uh, with up to 10 beaver pairs. And by supplementing them, we can help with sort of genetic diversity within that family group. So it would just be a small scale uh, managed reintroduction to see how beavers uh, get on and then hopefully um, we can go from there. So the project um, is a partnership, so between Wildlife Trust Wales um, and the Bevis Trust, who look after the site in Carmarthenshire. We're also working with uh, Wildwood Trust, um, uh, the Derek Gow Consultancy as well. Um, they're helping us sort of with supplying beavers um, to, to the project. Now there's so many beaver projects within the UK and enclosure of beavers, we can now source our beavers from within Britain rather than having to go to places like Bavaria. In time you may need to, um, to bring in new, sort of new blood, but, but to start off with, um, we can use captive bred beavers that are, being, um, that are used in, uh, to the British landscape. Um, obviously we're, we're supported by People's Postcode Lottery and we're working with Natural Resources Wales in terms of the licence application. So the licence is currently in with um, NRW, it's been reviewed uh, right now. Um, we have been in correspondence um, with them quite a bit recently and the Welsh Beaver Project has a meeting with Natural Resources Wales very soon to discuss the next steps of the licence. So, 
One of the next steps will be a public consultation to be led by NRW, likely to run for four to six weeks, and there'll be lots of information we put on our website uh, about the project. And it's, we're not quite sure of all the ins and outs, but it's likely to be um, based on, on their website where people can either email in or post in their comments um, about uh, the reintroduction of beavers to the site in Carmarthenshire. We will need your support for this. Um, so if you do want to see beavers back in Wales, please do respond to the, the consultation and please do respond positively to the consultation. We need as much support as possible to be able to get beavers back um, in Wales. Each individual response counts and as I said, the information, once we get it, will be put on a website so you'll be able to find out exactly how to respond to that consultation. So this is our website just here. Um, and there's much more information um, on our project on beavers themselves and how to manage beavers. So please do visit that and you can download the reports I talked about earlier as well. There's also information on how to support the project as well. So although we are supported by People's Trade <coughs> Code Lottery, we are currently fundraising for the project. Um, sort of for the next stages, once beavers are here, we want to develop educational programmes, research opportunities, um, open days for people to come and visit beavers, training volunteers to help with managing uh, beavers as Peter talked about in his talk um, so, so every penny uh, counts really you can also follow us on facebook and twitter and uh, we post regular updates on the project um, and as we get more information about our license application process we'll put updates on there and so one day we hope <coughs> We hope we'll have beavers um, back in Wales. <laughs> and we hope we can have some scenes like this where you can go down and enjoy watching beavers on your closest or nearby riverbank. <coughs> um, thank you. Thank you very much, Alicia. Can I